Hello students, so we will continue with our chapter units and measurements. In the last session, I explained you the various system of units. Now we will start with important point from practical point of view that how to write the symbols of SI units. Because in case you don't write proper symbol, the marks may get cut. Like all symbols have to be written in small alphabets. For example, in case you want to write meter, M should be small. You want to write kilogram, K should be small. So the units have to be written in small letters. You want to write second, S should be small. But there is a sub clause. In case the unit is named after scientist, then it should be written capital. For example, you want to write Newton, you are writing in capital, then you should write capital N. You want to write Joule, J. Joule is the name of a scientist, so you should write capital J. Watt is the name of a scientist. So you should write capital W. So in case I want to say the force applied is 10 Newton, I will write 10 and leave a gap and write capital M. Here there is another clause. In case you are writing name of a scientist in full, suppose you are writing 10, N E W T O N, then N would be small. So writing 4 Joule, J O U L E then J should be small. So this point you should keep in mind, don't make a mistake. And symbols are not followed by full stop. Other point is, units are never written in plural form. Suppose the length of this room is 10 meter, you will not write 10 meters, 10 ms, you will not make it plural, because ms would mean meter multiplied by second. So, no zonates have to be written in plural. Is it alright? And between number and zonate, you will leave some gap. As I told you, 10 Newton. So, 10 gap and then capital M. So, this point you should keep in mind in writing the symbols. Otherwise, the marks may get cut. Now, SI system has been accepted throughout the world. So there were many discussions. So what are the advantages of now this system that has been evolved? First is it is a rational system. It means same physical quantity is not measured in various ways. For example, energy is very good example. In SI system, we are measuring in Joule. Whether it is mechanical energy, heat energy, electrical energy, we measured in Joule. In earlier times, mechanical energy was measured in Joule, but heat energy was measured in calories. Electrical energy was measured in kilowatt hour. So, now we don't, we measure all types of energy in one system, Joule. So, this is called it a rational system. then it is a coherent system. Now what does it mean? It means all derived units are multiplied, are obtained by multiplying or dividing fundamental units without any numerical factor. No number comes. Then in electricity we are using same as practical units. What were defined earlier, so we have adopted them. Ampere, potential, resistance, inductance, all we are using practical. So there is no confusion and it is there. Then these units can be easily reproduced. They don't change with time. It is a comprehensive system, means whichever field of science and technology you are studying, you will find that these seven 
fundamental units and two supplementary units are adequate to define any other physical quantity. So these are advantages are listed here. You can learn. Sometimes they are asked. So now this is a very easy slide. You might be knowing. Like we will be using prefix to our units like meter. Uh, you might have a kilometer. So kilo is a prefix. So kilo uh, it tends to three as shown here. Kilo is tends to three. If I say giga, giga hertz, so it means tends to nine. I can say nano. Second means tends to minus nine. This is nano. This tends to minus nine. So all prefix commonly used prefix and uh, are listed here both for multiple and sub multiple. So this you can go through and learn it. Okay. Now this is an important slide. Now here we have done. Scientific units. Now, let us try to know the from practical units because many things are written in practical units, like angstrom is very important. Length used in light. One angstrom is ten days to minus ten meter. So you should learn this. One angstrom is ten days to minus ten. Meter. Now, very large lengths are measured in one unit called light year. One light year means distance travelled by light in one year. So, one light year, L Y. What is speed of light? Three into ten is to eight meters per second. So, uh, so I should multiply by number of seconds. So, one year, but my time is in one year. So one year has so many days. The 65.25 days into 24 to get in hours into 60 and 60 to get in seconds. So I am getting this answer. So one light year is around 9.467 into 10 to 15 meters. So this also you should learn. Then we say astronomical unit one AU. So one astronomical unit means. 1.496 tends to 11 meter. From where this distance has come, this is nothing but distance between Earth from Sun. So distance between Earth and Sun is called one AU. Then other is parsec. This is very important. One parsec. This is my Sun. This is my Earth. Now if I consider a point such that the angle between the angle subtended by Sun and Earth At that point, so so this point is O. So angle subtended by sun and earth at O is one second. So one second is very small angle. So this point has to be very far off. So S O earth E is one second. Then this distance is called one parsec. Now how I will calculate this distance is so far away. So sun and earth I can consider this as a Arc of a circle. I know angle is arc length upon radius. This I have explained to you last time. Angle is arc length upon radius. So what will be the, so radius would be arc length upon angle. So th that radius is one parsec from here from this point to here. So from this point to here. So this is an arc. So it is one parsec. So radius is one parsec. With the arc length upon angle, and what is arc length? So distance between sun and earth is one AU, and angle is one second. So convert this second into radian, and one AU into uh, meter. So I will get this is value of this is the value of one parsec. Why I converted angle into radian? Because this in this formula. Angle has to be in radian. This formula is true when angle is in radian. If angle is in degrees, you cannot do this formula. Is it all right? So one parsec is ten raised to sixteen. So.
so this is much more so one parsec is more than one light year and one light year is more than one this is 10 raised to 11 this is 10 raised to 15 this is 10 raised to 16 so you should know this values and it's how how they are defined or how we can calculate okay so then again other practical units are area like barn area is used normally in nuclear physics one barn means 10 to minus 28 meter square one acre this you might be knowing is 2047 meter square one hectare not as we're using hectare acre was used in british time uh, apia system so one hectare is 10 to 4 meter square now one ton or metric ton is 1000 kg so this ton we write t o double n e is right t o n it will become british ton or one metric ton it is called so one quintal is 100 kg one am u atomic mass zone is zone is 1 upon 12 mass of carbon atom then pressure one bar means one atmospheric pressure that is 10 to 5 bar one torr means pressure due to 1 mm of mercury column you know that 760 mm of mercury column is one atmospheric pressure so one atmospheric pressure is 760 torr is it all right so now we'll go to order of magnitude this is quite simple if any number is given to you you have asked that what is the order so what you should write you should write the number in 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 the nearest to 10 to 2 index like 7 i have written 0.7 into 10 to 2 1 i will not write 7 into 10 to 2 zero because nearest is 0.7 into 10 to 2 1 14 1.4 into 10 to 1 so in this manner you write the number then you see these values this value of n should be between 0.5 to 5 you write in this manner that value of this n is between 0.5 to 5 to see all my values are between 0.5 to 5 if these values are between 0.5 to 5 then order is the index of 10 here the index is 1 order is 1 Here the now you see here I have written it to two minus so I have to show you 0.998 into 10 raised to three. This is between 0.5 to five, so order would be 10 raised to three. If you write in this manner, you will say index is two. No, as this number is more than five, up to five this number should be. Here. If it is more than five, then I should increase this by one. So it will be three. So we so you write the number such that. You are having this number between 0.5 to 5. Then the index will give you the order. In case this is more than 5, then you have to increase the index by 1. So all examples are given here. You can just go through them. Suppose the numbers are given in this manner. We will write in this manner. So 2.5. Here I will say 0.64. I could have said 6.4, but then it would answer would be same. Because index will change, but then I have to increase the index by one. So you can just go through this, and uh, so this completes this topic. Now next time we will try to see how to really carry out measurement of length, mass, time, by direct methods and indirect methods. Okay, thank you.